A long time ago, back in 2016, I attended the EGX convention in the UK and filmed a short video dressed up as an inflatable T-Rex. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, yes! While I was there, I came across a stall that was so interesting, I had to check out what game they were showcasing. They had some interesting monsters roaming around, which instantly piqued my attention. I even fought one of the chefs and lost terribly, but that's beside the point! And the game? Well, it turned out to be none other than Little Nightmares. On this very day, I got to speak to the people behind Little Nightmares, that being Tarsia Studios, the original creators. And it's where I learned little tidbits of information, like how originally Six would get ripped apart when she was caught by monsters, but they decided to remove it for being too gruesome. I left that booth brimming with anticipation for the game's release. And on August 29th, I finally got to play the game. Where I immediately got the company's name wrong. Transia Studios. To say I like the game would be an understatement. The cryptic story, the hauntingly beautiful settings, and the monsters that seem to have an air of mystery around them kept me hooked right up until the end. And it was because of all these reasons, I decided to make my first theory video on the story of Little Nightmares. And well, it blew up. And thus started a trend of me playing a new DLC and then making a theory video right after. Who is the lady? Who is the granny? Who am I? Right up until Little Nightmares 2 and what a wild ride that was. And just as Little Nightmares had delivered arguably an even better game than the first one, there was trouble on the horizon. And just over six years later, the trailer for Little Nightmares 3 dropped. And well... The character designs, the settings, and even the monsters just felt different to me. I couldn't put my finger on it. It looked like Little Nightmares on the surface. It checked all the boxes. Just something about it didn't feel the same. I've loved this franchise so much, and to feel this way at the release of the third trailer, the hype, left me so conflicted. And I now know why I felt this way. Not too long after Little Nightmares 2 released, Tarsius Studios put out a statement addressing their departure from the Little Nightmares franchise, letting everyone know that they were leaving it in the hands of Bandai, while they went off to work on other projects. And I think this explains why I felt the way I did when I watched the trailer for Little Nightmares 3. In those trailers, we're already seeing them reuse tropes in Little Nightmares 3, like the eye turning you into dust coming from the baby now, and even the title card, which makes no sense. It was clever in Little Nightmares 2, because get it, there's two of them. But here, it's like, what? It, it, why does that make three now? Could it be possible that the original creators, that being Tarsia Studios, felt as though they had told the story? Was Little Nightmares itself only supposed to be Six's story, and that's why they left. With Bandai wanting to make more sequels, and with Tarsia Studios reluctant, they were left with maybe only one option, to leave. The original game was titled Hunger, and I mean, that's pretty much Six. The whole time in the first game, she's nothing but hungry. So with me feeling slightly disheartened with the future of the franchise, you can imagine just how caught off guard I was when I saw this clip play at the GamesCon live event. Game from Tarsier Studios, the creators of Little Nightmares 1 and 2. Wait, what? Whoa. Nothing lasts forever. No, 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 no. No, this... That, this is Little Nightmares. No way! No, no way! Oh, oh! Uh, what the? Uh. Dead. 
That's right, you just saw Tarsia Studios' new game named Reanimal. And it looks absolutely amazing. Everything that I felt I was missing from the Little Nightmares 3 trailer is here. I couldn't believe it, but how did this happen? How do we have now two games coming out that both look like the next installment in the Little Nightmares story? And more importantly, which one is the true sequel? Now, as much as Tarsius Studios might not want their new reanimal game to be compared to Little Nightmares, it's gonna happen. I mean, come on, it's clearly the same thing. Reanimal is created by the original team who created the characters, the story, and the world in the first place. And to understand this, we need to go back to the development of Little Nightmares, or, you know, back when it was called Hunger. Tarsia Studios were looking for a company to help fund their game. They didn't have the resources required to make it the vision that they wanted. So it just so happened that Bandai saw the potential in the project and decided to give them the support that they needed to turn it into its finished form. We'll never really know the stipulations of the contract signed between those two companies, but it might be possible that in exchange for agreeing to the funds and everything that Tarsia needed, did Bandai acquire the rights to the Little Nightmares as a franchise? If Tarsia Studios decided they were done with the story and wanted to leave it as it was, they couldn't. Not if Bandai wanted to make another game, and it's possible that this is what could have happened. And again, the reason why the trailer for the third one just felt off to me. We may never know what went on behind the scenes between the two companies, but what I do know is that I'm more excited for this new game, Reanimal, than I ever was watching the trailers for Little Nightmares 3. To me, Reanimal, besides being made by the OG creators of the universe I'm fond of so much, feels like the next step. And if we want to find out even more about Reanimal, we can head to the Steam page. The creators of Little Nightmares 1 and 2 have returned to take you on a darker, more terrifying journey than ever before. In this horror adventure game, a brother and sister go through hell to rescue their missing friends and escape the island that they used to call home. In the About section, we find out that it's a cooperative horror game, a bit like Little Nightmares 3. You explore by boat and on land, and you've got to use your wits to survive, exactly like Little Nightmares is. In this unsettling tale, the emphasis is on tension and thick atmosphere, as you join the two orphans on a desperate search for hope and redemption in the direst of circumstances. And what I find fascinating is this bit where it says, across a dark and twisted world, traverse an intriguing but terrifying world, where the main path is only one part of the fragmented story. Discover all sorts of mysterious locations on your perilous journey, each with its own story to tell. So does that mean that we're gonna have multiple endings and multiple branching paths and possibly every playthrough could be different? For the first time in the franchise, we are trying to rescue several children, which is something we've only seen in the short-lived comic book series. So to see this in game form feels like the natural next step. We see a world or an island inhabited by sentient animal creatures that have been risen from the dead, stitched together. Could this be how the monsters in the other Little Nightmares games function? Remember the chefs? Yeah, they were stitched up body parts together and I theorized that maybe they were mannequins controlled by some sort of magic? And that's so similar to the pig in the reveal trailer for Reanimal. They're coming. As well as in the actual trailer, we see a dead lamb come back to life, contorting its body in horrific ways. And can we just talk about the long overdue addition of speech in the franchise? Not that I really think the previous games needed it, but knowing that we'll be able to hear even the animals speak allows for so much more options when it comes to storytelling. Hearing the few bits of dialogue in the trailer just feels like a breath of fresh air. But what I find interesting about this whole situation is the similarities the Little Nightmare franchise has to another franchise, Oddworld. Both Little Nightmares and Abe's Odyssey released to critical success, and both had an equal if not even more successful sequel. Oddworld had Abe's Exodus, and Little Nightmares had Little Nightmares 2. On the surface, this seems like every game developer's dream. However, 
As it would turn out, the sequel Abe's Exodus was made in only nine months and wasn't what they had intended for their franchise. Years later, the co-founder of Oddworld, Lorne Lanning, had this to say about Abe's Exodus, that being the game they were forced to make, and Soulstorm, the game they are making now, the one they wish they could have made back then. Because I think you said that game was made in what, like nine months or some crazy yeah, was, rush job it was, originally? Yeah, it was just crazy. So it's, is it still that basic idea well, or has uh, it gotten further away from Exodus? Further away. Okay, why is that? <laughs> one, when we started the project, we had a limited set of funds. Exodus got off track right away, which is why we called it a bonus game. And the publisher was like, yeah, and that'll be the Quintology too. You'll live like nine months. And I was like, no, you know, you just <laughs> the story, man. It's bleeding in the street. We're not calling that the print. It's a bonus game, you know? And uh, it was really like that. It was like, they're like, Brutal. but what do you mean? It's part two. And I'm like, not nine months, mother. But just like Oddworld with Abe's Exodus, they were forced into making that game, was Tarsia Studios forced into making Little Nightmares 2. In the same vein as Oddworld, did they feel pressure to follow up their initial game with a sequel? So, what does all this have to do with Little Nightmares, I hear you ask? Well, did you know that there was a game Tarsia Studios were working on before Little Nightmares? It was called The City of Metronome. A lot of the design elements crossed over to Little Nightmares, and you can even find an easter egg at the very start of the game showing one of the characters from the cancelled game, that being a metronome. And in that game, there was a giant machine, and in order to run said giant machine, they would need to kidnap children, suck out their souls, and put them to work. Sounds awfully familiar now, doesn't it? Metronomes. Gnomes. Yes, yes, it's very similar. And for the sequel, Little Nightmares 2, I feel like Tarsia Studios took more from that unreleased game and repurposed it into what we have with Little Nightmares 2. Stuff like the signal tower was that giant machine, the thin man was the mysterious figure who owned the whole corporation, and would you believe that's exactly what Lorne Lanning had to do with Oddworld. We called it a bonus game because I took elements that were from the real story of the Quintology. And then I tried to kind of hack together a version of it that I could get a game out in nine months. And now that Tarsia Studios has moved away from Bandai and has the ability to make what they want to, just like Lorne Lanning has done with Oddworld, is it possible that Reanimal is the sequel that Tarsia Studios wanted to make but couldn't due to constraints? Both games have a male and female protagonist, both look very similar in playstyle and visual style, but I'll leave that up to you to decide. In the end, it's all just a theory, a beaver theory. The beauty behind Little Nightmares was to make us ask questions, to want to find out more. I watch this scene from Reanimal and I want to know everything about it. But when I watch this scene from Little Nightmares 3, I just think, oh, a giant baby monster. Cool. I don't feel like there's a deeper meaning behind it for some reason. But uh, who knows, maybe I'm just being cynical, it's hard to tell. It just sort of reminds me of when Disney bought Star Wars and started making all the new sequels. Sure, it says Star Wars on the tin, but is it really Star Wars? That's how Little Nightmares 3 feels to me at the moment. Of course, this could all change, but right now, it's a gut feeling for me. And I'm not trying to shoot down anyone's hopes for Little Nightmares 3 here. I really want the best for it and the hardworking team that's behind it. I just can't help comparing the two games to one another. I could see a world where both of these could be canon to each other. They share such similar themes. Anyway, guys, what do you think? Which one of these are you more excited for? And more importantly, which one do you believe is the true vision for the future of the Little Nightmares franchise? Leave your thoughts in the comments down below and I'll be there sifting through, picking your brains, as well as maybe leaving my two cents as well. And if you've enjoyed this video, guys, leave a like and until next time, I'll see you guys later. Oh, bye bye